for rolling. Let me talk in this video uh, briefly about um, censorship issues raised by the theater of the 1960s. Uh, as should be evident from previous videos, the, uh, the 60s was a very turbulent time. And uh, theater, had, theater played a significant role in um, uh, representing or embodying uh, changes in thinking and attitudes toward uh, the world, life, and society uh, through uh, uh, different kinds of practices. But theater was also important in uh, uh, political legal sense, insofar as um, the uh, pressures for change uh, within the society and within its institutions like theater uh, uh, led to a kind of uh, uh, openness of expression that was unprecedented in human history. Uh, and theater artists felt that they had to articulate experiences and uh, ways of communicating that previously the, uh, our society, certainly in most societies elsewhere in the, United, in the world, believed were taboo or inappropriate. And uh, the freedom of our society depended on um, opening up the possibility for uh, describing experiences and showing things that, um, uh, you, that many audiences, even today, uh, may regard as dangerous or frightening or um, unnecessary. And so the theater got involved in a number of uh, court cases uh, in the 1960s uh, for putting on shows that uh, the, the police, authorities, and many citizens felt should not be put on, that these, these are dangerous, uh, they set a bad example, and will lead to the corruption of our society. But many of the freedoms we enjoy today are the result of these court cases in which the theater proclaimed the right to, uh, to show things about life that uh, had never been shown on stage before or indeed in any other kind of art. Uh, and um, uh, theater was part of this larger movement that uh, uh, relaxed laws on censorship. So I wanted to talk about that a, a little bit in this video and um, describe the different kinds of cases that emerged, uh, most of which um, occurred in the latter half of the 1960s, but even before then in uh, uh, the early 60s, for example, uh, I, uh, I talked about in the video on, uh, on the backs uh, about the, the brig. Uh, that ran into legal difficulties and it took a bit of effort in the courts to make sure that that play uh, uh, could go on uh, in spite of the police efforts to suppress it. And even the Marine Corps was unhappy that this play was being produced, uh, giving such an unflattery portrait of, of uh, Marine Corps life. Uh, but in the, the, the mid to late 60s, uh, a, a huge number of censorship cases came up as more and more artists, not just theater people, but filmmakers and poets and, and uh, writers and uh, dancers and uh, were doing all kinds of shows uh, that uh, uh, tested the um, censorship laws of the time. Uh, and these shows were not all set in New York City, uh, but um, around the country. I do want to mention a couple from the mid-1960s here in California that uh, were important um, because they took place in the state universities. Uh, 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 students 
in collaboration with their professors put on plays. Uh, we cannot imagine this happening now, whereby students and professors collaborate on plays and then go to court to defend them. Uh, just, this wouldn't happen now. But uh, San Francisco State in 1966 and down in, uh, uh, I think it was Northridge or Fullerton um, uh, campus in 1964, 65, 66, students put on a play, we'll talk about this one a little later, uh, by Leroy Jones, now known as Amiri Baraka, called Dutchman, about a black man's encounter with a psychotic white woman in a subway in New York, one act play. Uh, but students, in the, under the guidance of a faculty member, uh, put it on. And in the, about 1966, students at uh, San Francisco State put on a play by Michael Beard. He was a beatnik poet in San Francisco. And he wrote a play called The Beard. Uh, Michael McClure, I'm sorry, Michael McClure is his name. He wrote a play called The Beard, uh, which had been running in a little theater in North Beach, San Francisco. But the students in San Francisco decided they wanted to do it as well after, even though the police had raided the North Beach Theater and gone to court to suppress it because it had a lot of sexually explicit language. The play, The Beard, dealt with the encounter, the mythic encounter between Billy the Kid and Marilyn Monroe. These two meet, these two mythic creatures of um, of American popular consciousness meet and then have a t turbulent sexual relation uh, which concludes, the end of the play concludes with Billy the, uh, the kid kneeling between Marilyn Monroe's knees, legs and, and uh, putting his mouth on her uh, vagina and this was done on stage explicitly without any fakery and the students did this at San Francisco State. Unimaginable nowadays, but they did it. And uh, all kinds of voices rose up in protest. What's happening at the state universities? And uh, Glenn Dumke was the chancellor at the time and had to testify uh, at hearings in um, at the legislature in, in Sacramento. Uh, to explain why the faculty and the students were doing these kinds of things with state tax, taxpayers' money. And uh, Dunkey was actually a rather conservative uh, person, uh, and I'm sure he was thinking all along, why can't the kids just do Shakespeare in a musical and not give me this kind of headache when they're doing these kinds of plays with this kind of stuff happening on stage and you know, students getting naked and sex acts and all of that. Nevertheless, he went before the hearing committee in Sacramento and said, look, the CSU is an educational institution. It's the responsibility of the faculty and the students to experiment, to look up, create new knowledge, and uh, to explore new paths of artistic activity. And he got a lot of criticism from it, from a lot of politicians and newspapers and whatnot. But the show went on. and. Uh, when the leadership at that higher level said, look, this is the mission of the university, it brought a lot of people on board. Uh, and these court cases went away in regard to the university productions. Meanwhile, you had all this other activity involving theaters in New York City and elsewhere. Uh, I mean, California was not unique. Many universities were doing all these wild productions inspired by Grotowski and the Becks and, and um, um, the uh, artistic spirit that had uh, uh, exploded, you might say, in the, in the 60s. But in New York, a number of court, court cases took place uh, that, um, that changed forever the way we look, about, look upon the power of governments to control what may be said or spoken or shown. And these include productions of, uh, Che was one of them, about the uh, Cuban uh, uh, revolutionary uh, who died in Bolivia. 
And Che was this kind of satiric portrait of the revolution, uh, revolutionary movement. But it featured all Che and had all these sex acts take place on stage. They were real. They weren't fake or anything. And they involved um, homosexuality uh, and a performance of homosexual acts on stage. That got into a lot of trouble and was on and off depending on where we were in the courts, the junctions, and so forth. Geese, another play about homosexuality, uh, arrived in New York uh, in 1967, and it went through court battles because they were showing men kissing on stage or taking off their clothes on stage and touching each other on stage. Perhaps the most famous example is the musical Hair. Hair gets revived nowadays. Geese and Che are long forgotten uh, plays, uh, uh, and they will never be revived. But it was, they are important not because of what they had as text, but because of what the performers did in relation to them that was unprecedented. But Hair has remained with us uh, partly because the tunes are uh, Let the Sun Shine In, and, uh, the same famous song about hair, and it's about um, uh, the pressure from the, the establishment, why don't the men growing their hair long and, and uh, um, wearing in these strange kinds of hairdos and so forth, and, and uh, it was an act of protest against this kind of establishment way of thinking that prevailed in the 1950s. But it also had nudity, and um, at the end, you know, performers take off their clothes, and they invite the people to come up onto the stage, as Beck was doing, and sing Let the Sun Shine In uh, all together. And um, uh, that ran into uh, difficulties with the law, and the lawyers for the theater won out, as they did again with the production of Old Calcutta, this was a sex show on Broadway where the actors are naked from beginning to end and they enact various sexual fantasies. It, uh, much of it was written by a drama critic, Kenneth Tyner, who was quite famous at the time and one of the most brilliant minds uh, uh, to write about theater uh, at that time. I can't say Old Carcutt is a show that's uh, memorable for any other reason than that it had uh, all of these naked people performing these not particularly interesting fantasies, uh, but it was a huge hit, and yet the law tried to suppress it because it was violating decency codes. Old Calcutta won uh, a court battle there. Another play was McBird, a play about the Johnson administration. Uh, and um, uh, what happened following the Kennedy assassination was totally paranoid play, uh, which uh, uh, ascribed all kinds of demonic uh, uh, ambitions to, uh, to, the, to the president, Lyndon Johnson. And uh, McBird is like uh, the Shakespeare play Macbeth, adapted to the late 60s with, uh, uh, with Johnson having taken over the presidency after being involved in the assassination of Kennedy or Duncan, as in, in Macbeth, and uh, Lady Bird is this, like Lady Macbeth figure, totally, but this was where people's heads were. They were crazy in many ways, and did this political play uh, that brought about all kinds of uh, uh, efforts to s s uh, suppress it, uh, which failed, and yet the damage was not, you know, was not great. <laughs> Uh, as many had for, uh, prophesied, they, they thought all of this wildness going on in the theater is going to lead to the fall of America or something. Well, it just led to the end of the 60s and moved into a new decade uh, in which Americans enjoyed far greater freedoms than they had before. But I think it's important to realize that the theater played a major role in um, assuring that those freedoms are available, even if, as now seems the case, uh, we don't take advantage of those freedoms. And much of the theater does seem a lot less adventurous than it was back in those days. Uh, they did take a lot of big risks that uh, most people cannot even imagine taking 
nowadays, but sometimes that's what it takes in order for a new kind of society and a new uh, vision of, of human freedom and uh, potentiality to emerge. Okay?